Welcome to Women of the Military Podcast, a girl's guide to military service sponsored by Women Veterans Alliance. This week's episode is on an important topic that I think we should cover, but I don't really want to cover when talking about joining the military, and it's the challenge of being a woman in the military. And while I wish I could say that being a woman in the military is the same as being a man in the military, it is not the same, and there are a lot of challenges that women have faced while serving in the military. The military is working to make things better for women, and as the number of women who serve in the military go up and the number of positions filled by women at higher ranks goes up, it is bringing more positive changes for women serving But that doesn't change the fact that there are challenges, and one of the best ways I think that we can help prevent or limit the challenges that women face is being open and talking about what those challenges are and sharing our own experiences of service, which is why the Women of the Military podcast exists. So let's get started with this topic. Before we get started, let's hear from Women Veterans Alliance, and we'll hear a little bit more about my new book coming out next week, A Girl's Guide to Military Service. Thank you to our title sponsor, Women Veterans Alliance. Women Veterans Alliance is the premier national network focused on directly impacting the quality of life of women veterans. They do this successfully through transforming the way the community networks bring people and programs directly together. One of the events they do to help make this happen is each year Women Veterans Alliance hosts the Women Veterans Boots and Ball Gowns Gala to support Women Veterans Giving. This year the event will be held Friday, October 14th, 2022. This year they will also be presenting the Beyond the Call of Duty Award in honor of Sergeant Nicole Gee, who died while serving in Afghanistan during the evacuation last summer. I also want to talk about my new book, A Girl's Guide to Military Service, Selecting Your Specialty, Preparing for Success, Thriving in Military Life. The link to pre-order is in the show notes, so go and pre-order your copy today. This book is for any young woman considering a job or career in the military. It is full of tips, information, and perspectives gathered from a variety of women who have served And this guide will help you discern if the military is right for you, evaluate enlisting or commissioning as an officer, selecting the branch and career field that fits you best, preparing for training mentally and physically, integrating personal life, relationships, and motherhood with military service, managing stress and increasing mental toughness, navigating unique challenges as women in the military, and thriving in your military career. So I'm really excited for this book to come out, and next week I'll be sharing a little bit more about it to wrap up the series and to celebrate everything that has happened over the past summer to get ready to this point to share this book with all of you. So I'm really excited, and I can't wait for this book to be out in the world so that it can help young women as they look into joining the military. So let's get back to the topic of women serving in the military, and One of the most important things about this topic that I think we need to start with when we talk about women serving and why there are so many challenges is the history of military and the women is actually very short. Even though women have served in the U.S. military since the beginning, the Revolutionary War, they weren't formal members. Many spouses would serve as nurses and help take care of men in the camps, and then some women would dress up and disguise themselves as men so that they could serve. The most famous of these women is Deborah Sampson. I have a link in the show notes with more of her story, and there's a bunch more history if you want to look into it. In the Civil War, women continued to serve as nurses, and women also continued to dress up and serve disguised as men. Harriet Tubman was a vital spy for the Union Army. In June of 1863, Harriet Tubman organized and led an expedition along the Kambahi River into Confederate territory. It's the first documented case of a woman leaving a war campaign. Although she wasn't compensated or recognized for her service in the Civil War, she did have a huge impact behind the scenes and was an important part of changing the military for women. And then... In World War II, there were so many men required to fight the war against the Nazis that 
women started to fill non-traditional roles, such as being pilots in the Women Air Force Service Pilots Program, WASP, and other jobs or career fields that were typically reserved for men. And women were able to show that they could fill these roles, but with the wars ending and men coming back to the States and needing jobs, a lot of women were pushed out of the careers that they had created and really struggled to move forward. It wasn't until the 70s when women were allowed to attend academies and uh, more opportunities were available for women that things started to really change and the WAC was disbanded. And I could spend a lot more time talking about the history of military women, but I really wanted to show that although women have been playing a role in the military for hundreds of years, a lot of uh, the roles of women were limited, and it explains a lot of the culture around women serving and the challenges that we face. So I wrote an article about the history of women on my blog, so I'll link to that in the show notes. And then I am also planning in March to do a deeper dive of history of military women so that I can share more stories about the work women have done because I've been reading a lot of books about the women of World War II and the things that they did that no one ever talked about. And so I think it's important to talk about what women have done in the past and how even though a lot of their work was hidden and it took a long time for women to be able to do things, they did break barriers and change perceptions and started to move things forward. And women continue to break glass ceilings and fill new roles and show that women can serve in the military and are a vital part of the U.S. military. So now let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges. And one of the first challenges is being single in the military. Military members often get married at a very young age, and this is sometimes in part to the fact that they date someone and then it's time to move to a new assignment, and so the best decision at the time may seem like it's a good idea to get married so you can be stationed with the person. And while sometimes that can work out, there's lots of examples of where that works out fine. There's also lots of examples where it wasn't the best decision to get married so quickly. And so I really think it's important to talk about how important it is to take your time, make good choices, and to not be overwhelmed by being around so many young men when you first join the military. Well, I think being single is great. When I was a young person, I really struggled to find happiness being single. Uh, It took a lot of soul searching for me to realize that I was a strong, confident, amazing person, and I didn't have to pretend to be someone else. I could just be myself. It was actually a few months after this realization and I started acting like myself and not pretending to be someone else that I met my husband and we started dating, um, but I was not ready to be in a serious relationship. So we dated and we were friends and we spent a lot of time hanging out with groups of people and not one-on-one so that we could get to know each other. And eventually it was obvious that it was meant to be. And so we started dating exclusively and now we've been married for over 15 years and the point of this story is not to say that you if you are happy with yourself you'll meet your life partner I look back on that time in my life and I realize how pivotal it was to just being happy with myself and being able to move forward with my life and I think that if you work on yourself and you're happy with who you are and you realize how amazing you are as a person, that that's the best time to start dating because you don't want to have to pretend like you're someone else or let someone else's thoughts and opinions change who you are so that they'll keep dating you. I did that also and it's not a good idea. So focus on yourself, be who you are and know that you are the best person to be you and you don't have to change who you are to, to be happy with yourself and to find the right person. When you're happy with yourself, people can see it. And another tip that I'll throw out is to take time at each new assignment to get familiar with the area, meet the people that you're working with, 
get settled in your either your dorm or your new house and spend that time focusing on yourself and not worrying about dating. It's a personal decision on what you do, but maybe tell yourself that for the next three months, I'm going to focus on myself, focus on my job, and I'm not going to worry about relationships. And that doesn't mean you can't hang out with friends and meet people, but instead of dating or being in serious relationships, you can make choices on focusing on yourself and you can decide to change that or modify it any way that fits you best. It's just an idea or suggestion that I wish I would have had when I looked into joining the military. I also think that young women, especially single young women, can find themselves being at the expense of a lot of rumors. Sometimes because there are so few women serving in the military, there can be a lot of rumors about women and what they're doing, good or bad. And so if you find yourself as a part of a rumor, you can address it and tell people that it's not true or you can ignore it and hope that it goes away. But if you feel unsafe either mentally or physically because of the rumors that are being spoken about you, you can always reach out to your supervisor, you can talk to a chaplain, you can meet with a behavioral health or mental health representative, You can reach out to the Women of the Military Mentorship Program and get connected with a woman veteran who can help advocate and give you advice. The main thing that you should do is talk to someone about the challenge that you're facing and get help from someone. And if one person you talk to says that it shouldn't be bothering you and you should just ignore it and you should just move on, go and find another person. You are your best advocate and there are people who want to help you and you should not have to work in a place that you don't feel safe mentally or physically. And so it's really important that you reach out and you get help and protect yourself from the challenges of being at the end of a rumor. Another not so fun topic to talk about when it comes to the challenge of being a woman in the military is military sexual trauma, which is the term that the military uses for rape and sexual assault. And it is a problem in the military. And I was talking to someone and they asked why so many stories and changes began to happen. And I think a lot of it came back to the Me Too movement that happened in the community at large. It also happened in the military where people started talking about the challenges they faced and how they didn't talk about it. And I've had a number of people on the podcast talk about being raped and not telling anyone or if they told someone the backlash that ensued. And so I think with Vanessa Guillen's death, a lot of challenges were brought to light and laws were changed with the Vanessa Guillen Act. And so it is important to know about the challenges because I think being naive or innocent to what challenges are out there are part of the reason that there are so many problems because women aren't aware of the danger that they're in and they put their guard down and they don't take the extra steps that they would normally take because these are their brothers who they serve alongside and then they find themselves in a not good situation. And so it's really important to talk about why this topic is so important And you should know there are programs in the military that are advocating for you. There is the Sexual Assault Response Coordinator, SART, that the Air Force uses. And there's a different acronym or title for all the branches. It's too complicated to give all the information in this short podcast episode. But there is a Sexual Assault Response Coordinator that can help you and show you how to report your case help you to know what ways you can advocate for yourself and if you aren't able to get the support on base that you need mentally physically whatever the case may be legally you can also get support from me I'm working to create a list of different organizations that help women when they deal with military sexual trauma and so I am working on creating that and so that will be a link on the blog in the future, but if you send me an email, you can also contact me on social media. I'll send you the resources directly so that you can get the help that you need. This is a really hard topic to talk about. For me, 
I was never a victim of sexual assault or rape, and I feel really lucky, but I know that there are so many women who have experienced this and have had this challenge, and so it's really important that we talk about it, it's known, and we do what we can to protect the next generation. So that's why I think it's so important to talk about. Another topic that's related to being a woman in the military is being a mom. And it is possible to be a mom and to serve in the military. And the military is working to make it easier to serve. In the last 10 years, the military has reorganized the maternity program for all branches and it gives women 12 weeks of maternity leave along with giving women one year after birth before having to leave for a deployment and pass the physical fitness test. And while having a baby is one of the first challenges moms face because you have a baby and your life changes completely, there are continual challenges as your kids get older. And I really love Rojan's Robotham's book, Working Moms, How We Do It, because she talks about her career in the military and and how her life changed when she had kids and how she's able to continue to serve in the military while being a mom. And I think it's really important that moms in the military have these resources because I think when I left the military, when I became a mom, I felt really overwhelmed and like it wasn't possible to do And if I had had this book, maybe I would have considered staying in the military longer and seen that it was possible to do both serve in the military and to be a mom. So that's why I wanted to share that resource. And I have a link to it in the show notes so that you can order it if you're interested in it. And then another aspect of being a mom is that many moms are single parents and that adds additional challenges to military life. But I have interviewed a number of single moms who talked about the challenges and how they overcame them, so you can check out their stories. I link to them in the show notes, but there's a number of women who are serving or have served in the military, and they talk about how they built their support network and how they were able to get through each assignment, relying on family, relying on friends, deploying and having to leave their children behind with either friends or family members and what that whole experience was like. Another challenge that women face while serving in the military is being lonely because there are not a lot of women in the military and sometimes you may be the only woman in your unit. You may be the only woman who deployed on a different training and you find yourself being alone and not having anyone that you can talk to or be yourself around and that can be really lonely. I know that I talk to A number of women who've talked about how being lonely while deployed was really a challenge. And then a funny story that I like to tell is that when I first moved to my first assignment as a second lieutenant, I got an email within the first two or three weeks. And it was a big email that went out to all the lieutenants and captains. And one of the people had been at the base for a few months and she didn't know any other women and she was really lonely. So she looked through the email list of people and she said, Amanda, I know that's a girl's name. And so she sent me an email and she said, I don't know any other women on this base and I really would like to be friends. And that was how we became friends. And when I told one of my male colleagues about it, he was shocked that I responded to a message of someone who wanted to connect and thought it was a little bit crazy. But as a woman in the military, I knew how hard it was to find other women. And so I totally related to what she had said, even though I'd only been there for a few weeks. But I could empathize with how she felt. And she ended up being a really good friend and we're still friends today. So I made the right choice by hitting reply to her email and getting to know her. Another challenge related to being a woman in the military related to other women is that sometimes the women you work with you won't get along with or there can even sometimes be a little bit of animosity or competition between other women. I know this was a bigger problem in the past and I'm hoping that things are getting better and that it's a more supportive environment where the philosophy of all tides lift all boats. If women work together and 
support each other in the military. It can help us to do more, have more opportunities, and and just be a better situation. So hopefully you don't run into that where you have drama with some of the women that you work with, but if you are lonely and you don't have the support that you need, you can always sign up to be on the mentorship program and start to connect with another woman veteran or service woman who can help you maybe give you advice or help you to get connected in your community. And don't limit yourself to just getting involved on base. There are a number of ways to get involved in your local community. You can volunteer with different organizations that you're interested. You can join a church or another nonprofit to learn more about the community. There are ways to get involved in both the community and the base, and you don't have to just focus on your unit, focus on where you're living if you're in the dorms, but you can really build a community outside of the gate of the base and make friends that way too. I think the friendships that you make in the military are the best part, and so I really hope that you're able to make good friends and to not struggle with loneliness, but I know it is something that some people have struggled with, so I wanted to include it here. And then the last topic I want to talk about is the challenge of being married in the military. Being and then getting married is a challenge in and of itself, but the military makes it a little bit more challenging, and it can be hard if you're married to someone who's in the military, or it can be hard if you're married to someone who is not serving in the military, what we like to call civilians. So it's important to have strong communication with your future significant other to tell them about your career, your dreams, and your hopes for the future, and just to make sure that they understand the commitment on both your commitment and the commitment that they will be required to make if you get married and you have to move somewhere. There's a number of women who have talked on the podcast being married to service members or being married to civilians. So I think very much possible to be married to someone in the military, but it does take a lot of communication and it also takes a lot of sacrifice. And I don't think military spouses get enough credit for the sacrifices they have to make when they have to start over, create a new career, find a new job, get everything situated behind the scenes. There's so much going on and it can be really challenging. And so I think that if you can talk to your future significant other about your commitment to the military and make sure they're included in conversations on if you plan to continue serving, if there's a job opening and you want to take it to make sure that they are on board. And sometimes you can't talk about things because the military makes the final decision and they might choose to move you even if you don't want to move. But if you are able to keep the communication lines open and talk to your spouse about those things, it's really important. So those were the main things that I wanted to talk about when it comes to serving in the military and being a woman. But I also want to talk about the fact that if you serve in the military, it can be really challenging to go to war. It can be challenging to to deal with sexual harassment, um, having people talk about you, having people say things about you. It can be really challenging, but I think that the military is a great opportunity for women. I think the post-9-11 GI Bill is a great benefit. I love that you can transfer it to your kids if you continue to serve after your children are born, or you can use that benefit after you get out of the military and go back to school and get either your degree or your master's. There's a lot of great opportunities for women, and so this episode is important because I think it's important to talk about how challenging it can be, but it's not meant to dissuade you. It's just to let you know about what challenges are there and to be real and to be honest about what it's like to serve in the military. But as you know, I wrote a book, A Girl's Guide to Military Service, on how to decide if the military is right for you. And in it, we talk about 
some of the things we talked about in this episode, along with helping you determine if the pros or the cons of military service, which is better for you. I don't advocate that all women join the military. I advocate that the right person joins the military. So I think it's really important that we talk about these things and we make good choices and we don't shield away from something just because it's hard to talk about. So I really hope this episode was helpful. I really hope the series was helpful. If there's other topics that you would like me to cover related to joining the military, please feel free to contact me via social media on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, or Facebook. And you can also send me an email and tell me what topics you want to be answered. And if you're looking for mentorship in helping decide if the military is right for you, you can always join the Women of the Military Mentorship Program, which I'll link to in the show notes so that you can get connected with a woman veteran or service member and learn a little bit more about the military from their experience. And always use the podcast as a resource. There's over 200 episodes. This is episode 201. And so there's so many resources out there to help you, and I'm working to create more things to help you in the future. Thanks so much for listening to this week's episode. I really hope that it helped you in your journey to the military. And I also want to give another shout out to our sponsors for the series, Women Veteran Alliance, Jay Volbrecht Consulting, Garrett Sorensen with Markham Wealth, Photography by Trish Algrea-Smith, Serve Like Her, and Nomadies Collections. You can learn more about our sponsors at the Girl's Guide to the Military landing page, which I have linked to in the show notes where you can also find every episode from the series. Thanks so much for listening, and I hope you'll come back next week.